The time is finally here. 2023 has come to a close and I've narrowed down my top 10 fragrance purchases of the entire year. I bought an incredible amount of fragrances, 130 full-size bottles. I go to the extreme because this is what I do, this is what I love, but I recommend absolutely zero people to do what I did. By the way, this is gonna be in no particular order. It's just my top 10 favorite. Wow, it was incredibly hard to narrow it down. So let's start it off with a banger. Guerlain L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum. I originally featured this fragrance in a video that I think I was saying I may have found my favorite fragrance. To this day, it remains up there. This fragrance is absolutely incredible. When you smell this, you're getting a cherry, almond, vanilla with a bit of a leathery, incense-y dry down. Wow, it's like sweet and classy come together and just make this intoxicating aroma. I was honestly in love with this at first sniff and it's just gotten better over time since I've continued to wear this over the multiple wearings that I've chosen to pick this over the 130 other fragrances that I bought this year. This is incredible and it makes me so excited in 2024 to explore the other fragrances in this line because I was completely blown away. This is a very high quality fragrance for a pretty good price. It's not too overly expensive and it's technically a niche brand. It's not a designer. Argue that in the comments. I've surprisingly gotten better performance than some people mention out of this. It being a newer batch in the newer style bottle, I don't really understand the whole performance gripe against this because it's been pretty good on my skin and I usually get horrible performance. None Nonetheless, on to number two. Okay, so this fragrance is technically considered a niche fragrance, but it has more designer elements. This is Mancera's Cedra Boise. Oh my goodness, where do I even begin? This is probably not only one of my favorite fragrances I bought this year, but it is clearly one of my most worn. For a fragrance to have that much of a dent in such a short amount of time, it just goes to show you how much I have loved this fragrance. This is a magnetic cap. Some people say that the magnetic cap, as soon as they implemented that from the original, which was a screw cap version, they say that the performance was weakened. I disagree. This is still getting very good performance on me. And the scent profile is very good. Kind of in the style of Aventus, but it's not. I don't even think they smell similar, but it's in the style. You can definitely tell it's in the style. So it's kind of like a mixed bowl of fruits with some woods with a little bit of a smoky dry down. It smells of very, very high quality ingredients. This is Eau de Parfum concentration. So price to value ratio here is incredible. You're getting a pressurized atomizer. Some people say it smells like an ashtray. So that is why you should definitely sample any fragrance before you buy it. But for me, I'm so happy to have this. On to number three. Number three is a new release in 2023. That is Le Mal Elixir. Wow, where do I even begin? I finally got my Oscar. You're gonna get these compliments from a mile away with this fragrance because it is incredibly powerful. This is like a honey, tobacco, vanilla forward version of Le Mal. When I first sprayed this on, I put on like five sprays or something like that. I went to a party and I stunk up the entire place. Everyone Everyone's like, what is that smell? All the way down the hallway, they were smelling me with this. This is like something that you don't even want to go more than like three sprays unless you want to be seriously noticed. It is a very seductive, alluring, inviting scent profile that a lot of people are going to like, men and women. It is an absolute compliment magnet. And I think that this was an incredible release for Jean-Paul Gaultier. It's honestly so mass appealing, but it can become a little bit sickeningly sweet for some because that honey and vanilla combination, one of my favorite new releases in 2023. The next fragrance on the list, this one really surprised me. And I mean that with all my heart. I was truly surprised. I kind of knew what to expect. At least I thought I did going into it because of the name. Mason Margiela Replica by The Fireplace. It is literally exactly that. They were able to accurately replicate the smell of what it's like sitting beside a fireplace on a cold winter night. You come inside, you need to get that warmth and you're sitting by the fireplace. You get a hot chocolate and you're sipping on that hot chocolate by the fireplace. This is exactly exactly what this fragrance is and I absolutely love it. It's such an addicting, attractive scent profile. The notes are like guyac wood, vanilla, chestnut. All of that combines together. You're getting that smoky woody accord off of that guyac wood and that chestnut and vanilla just combine together so nicely to give you that almost like holiday sweetness. Honestly, like when I think of wearing this, I think of like Christmas Eve. I think of around Christmas time. You have that warm fireplace going, warming the house or in a log cabin or something Something like that. You're with your significant other in a blizzard and then you come in and you sit by the fireplace. She comes in close to you. That entire fireplace vibe in the winter is accurately represented with this. But at the same time, adding in that seductive and attractive sweetness. This is a masterpiece. Scent memory in a bottle. Okay, number five. This one I just actually reviewed on the channel and it honestly might be one of my favorite new releases in 2023. That is Hugo Boss Bottled Elixir. 
it's honestly a sleeper hit. I don't see a lot of people saying that this is like overly good. It kind of just passes by everyone in the community. This stuff is absolutely incredible. It smells nothing like any of the other Boss Bottled fragrances, by the way. It maintains its own originality by being an incense, woody, amber, heavy fragrance, pretty much, with some patchouli in the forefront. But to me, it just smells like a sweet root beer with added woods, spices, and incense. It is so incredible. I really love this fragrance. Although it's a little bit situational in the fact that it's super classy, masculine smelling, it's not the most versatile fragrance you're ever gonna own. When the time calls for it and you want something more high class smelling that smells like it's four times more expensive than it is, almost smells borderline niche in the fact that it's not the most mass appealing scent profile, Hugo Boss Bottled Elixir is a fragrance for you. I absolutely love this release. It was a daring release for Hugo Boss to put out, but I think they did an incredible job with this and honestly, I think it deserves a lot more credit. This fragrance not only smells good, the performance is incredible. You're getting 12 plus hours if you actually put it on your skin and it's gonna give you a good dense sillage that's going to last all day. It's honestly a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be too. Just watch your sprays if you're going to get the new Boss Bottled Elixir. The next fragrance I want to talk to you about, Le Beau Le Parfum. Oh my goodness, Jean-Paul Gaultier. Again, another banger. Holy smokes. I didn't want to feature the same brands on this list, but with Jean-Paul Gaultier, it's impossible not to because all their fragrances are hits. Hit, hit, hit. Tell me one fragrance from Jean-Paul Gaultier that's a failure. Tell me one. Just kidding, please don't. You probably can think of a couple, but I absolutely love this fragrance. You're getting pineapple, coconut, iris, cypress. Like the scent profile is tropical. I wore this in Miami day and night, and wow, the compliments I was getting with this fragrance were unexpected. I love the scent profile, but when I get compliments from others on a scent profile I actually enjoy, that's when I truly love it. Usually I get, for some reason, compliments on fragrances I don't particularly like myself. Like you, Pom, I don't know why I get compliments on that, but I decide not to wear it because I don't like it. Le Beau Le Parfum is an absolutely incredible fragrance. It opens very loud. Sure, the performance is not going to last that way all day. It is a little bit too sweet for the super high heat. That's why I think that this is perfect for the nighttime. Anytime you want that tropical vacation feel in a bottle, this is it. This is probably the only one you need. Although it doesn't get the best performance off of my skin personally, it may work better on you and I highly suggest that you check this one out because if you don't, I, I'm sorry, I just touched your bulge there. If you don't, you're definitely missing out. I know I don't want to sell compliments on this channel, but by far my most complimented fragrance of the year, One Million Lucky. This is a fragrance I didn't expect to get so much compliments from at first sniff, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like it right away. I really did not like it right away. I sprayed this on and I was like, eh, it's different. It's okay. It's very airy. It's not really my style. That changed very quickly. This fragrance is honey. It's hazelnut, plum. It's very sweet, airy, and bright, but at the same time, it has this attractive, seductive sweetness to it that brings in compliments all day long. I don't like to sell compliments on this channel, but I'm telling you, this is one of my most complimented fragrances of all time. I don't know why they discontinued this. Is it discontinued? It's just incredibly hard to find. I'm pretty sure it's been discontinued, but it went on clearance at my local shopper's drug mart for $21.99. And I bought two bottles because I was like, okay, if it's going to be discontinued, I might as well have a backup. For that price, you can't go wrong. But this stuff, even at $100 or at full retail, is absolutely worth the money. If you haven't tried this one yet, it's going to be hard to get, but I think you definitely should. Not the most masculine fragrance you're going to ever smell in your life, but Paco Rabon, oh my goodness. You did good on this one. And you surprised me because it's not often that I don't like a fragrance at first sniff and then it becomes one of my favorites. And this one is definitely one of those fragrances to do that for me. The next fragrance on the list, I could not help myself. It's another 2023 release by Paco Rabanne, Invictus Victory Elixir. This fragrance is absolutely incredible. What can I say? It's another amazing release in 2023. We had a lot of good releases this year. In fact, I should probably make a best of for 2023 because it's been a really good year for new releases and also a mediocre year. These fragrances have gotten a comparison in their scent profile. I think that they truly are completely different, but some people are obviously going to detect similarities in pretty much anything, especially when you're talking designers. But this is fruits, it's vanilla, it's amber, coconut chocolate. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Later on in the dry down, you're gonna pick up a little bit more on that woody incense. It does like progress slightly, I've noticed. It's just a slight progression in some of that sweetness when it backs off. Not only another great elixir flanker, this is another great 2023 release. Now, because it's so loud, because it's very synthetic, I go super anosmic to this. And it's actually quite loud and powerful, but it blows out my nose. I can only smell it for like the first couple hours. And then I'm like, oh, where'd it go? And then the next day I'll smell my shirt and I'll be like, oh, it's still there. This is a fragrance that's gonna 
gonna give a lot of people anosmia. You're gonna go nose blind to it. Your nose is gonna filter it out. So be careful. Just because it doesn't smell strong on you to your nose doesn't mean that it's not strong to others. And if you haven't already, definitely check this new release out, Invictus Victory Elixir. We're getting down to the final two. Next up, we have Bulgari Man in Black. This is a fragrance I wanted to add to my collection for such a long time, and I don't know why I never did. When I first smelt this fragrance, I was in Mexico in the high heat. It was like 35 degrees. I put it on in a local store, and I walked out and I was like, I shouldn't have done that. It's the complete opposite of a fragrance that you wanna wear in the extreme high heat. This is like fall, winter. This is when you wanna wear a fragrance like this. It's boozy, it's spicy with a leather dry down. It also has this earthy tobacco, these warming elements, but then it adds in these florals, which kind of soften it up a bit. This is class. It's a classy fragrance that you don't want to really wear casually. I loved when I first smelt it and I love it today and I've worn it a lot already after I bought it only a couple weeks ago. I did have decants, you know, I have decants of some of these fragrances that I was sampling with before I actually bought the full bottle, but it's time. If you have not smelled this one, you definitely should because it is absolutely incredible. High class. It smells a lot more expensive than it actually is. Let's get down to the last one on this list. Secretion. Magnifique. No, I'm just kidding. I actually bought that one for the memes. But the last one on the list is Aqua Dijo Profumo. Do I even need to tell you why I bought this fragrance and why it makes my top 10 of the fragrances I bought in 2023? This fragrance is tried, true, and tested. It's absolutely incredible. Pretty much every fragrance reviewer on YouTube recommends this thing, and they're not wrong. It's incredible. Although my bottle is a little bit of a newer bottle, it doesn't have the silver lettering. It doesn't have the magnetic cap but I don't think that the scent profile altered all that much. With all that being said though, this was honestly one of the last batches ever made. I'm not kidding. When I bought this, I made a review afterwards and I said, I don't know why people are saying it's discontinued. It's still available on the website. Guess what? Not even like two weeks later, discontinued, not available on the website anymore. You can't even buy this in stores. In fact, they changed it to Aqua Dijo Parfum, which is actually slightly different. I can honestly say I have one of the last batches of Aqua Dijo Profumo in existence. That just shows how cool I am. No, not really, but still. This is like an aquatic, incense patchouli fragrance. It's the most masculine fragrance in the Aqua de Jo line. This just adds a different layer, a different depth underneath all of the other Aqua de Jo's. Adding in that incense and patchouli really mans this fragrance up. This fragrance defines the boss. It's the man that knows what he wants from life. It's a powerful, rich man. It smells like high class masculinity in a bottle. You know, it's one of my favorite fragrances of all time, let alone alone one of my favorite purchases in 2023. But if you haven't tried this one, good luck. I'm sorry to say, you can always get the Aqua de Jo Parfum because it's pretty much like super close to this one. I'm just happy to have it in my collection. It did get discontinued shortly after. I made the right move. This is 125 milliliters. This is gonna last me a lifetime. So that was my top 10 fragrances that I bought in 2023. It was incredibly hard to narrow down because I bought 130 fragrance bottles, but I did it. There are so many fragrances that I wanted to put on this list that just didn't quite make it but please I want to know what your favorite fragrances that you bought this year are so please leave those in the comments below let me know what you thought on these fragrances that I featured in this video because I would love to hear your thoughts make sure you spray that like button and subscribe because next year I'm gonna detail even more incredible fragrances less hype beasts some fragrances that you may not have known about thank you so much to everyone who stayed with me throughout this entire 2023 we had an incredible year thanks for watching I love you all and I hope you have an amazing start to your 2024 happy holidays